Well, first of all, this is actually a rematch of the time that Quadrant won it in Grand Finals. It was Quadrant versus Online Warriors, and they had Respectful. Now, Shady's back in. They had Defrag subbing last week, but they were a little bit upset to see them play so well and Respectful just to jump ship onto Ascend, and they were tweeting out how, you know, they were cursed, and you see Flux tweeting out and Snakey, and then all of a sudden Shady's available and he's looking to play. So now they have a player who is on the exact same level, if not a fraction better than, than Respectful is, certainly in history will dictate that Shady has been on the top team for 599 days actually to be, to be exact so <laughs> Shady offers a hell of a lot a totally different player in a totally different package to Respectful and that's probably why we, we might see some different results will Shady be able to play the same way as he did to get with a stand that remains to be seen so there's going to be a question mark there but this series is going to be brilliant I'll tell you what, hopefully that question mark will turn into an exclamation mark with the answer to it, Shirzy, because Gaskin and yourself, you're on the mics. Let's get right into this one and see what this new edition of Shady can really do. Thanks so much, Lottie. Dan, hopes and expectations, aspirations. The Quadrant should make it back to the, at least the, win, the, the losers finals, but all of a sudden they have an online Warriors team in front of them that are here to play and throw maybe a spanner in the works. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about clapping earlier, and I think there could be some clapping of cheeks in this series. I'm a little oh, bit God. worried for Quadrant. Like, they, Quadrant d didn't look good at all in that previous series against Na'Vi. And Online Warriors are a team who are just, at the moment, wanting that that bite again of a Grand Finals. You've got these these players who just desire to push themselves further. Snakey wants it more than ever. Flux has been questioning why hasn't he been getting that team to actually propel him to top two, to, to first place. So they will want to shut down this quadrant roster who are going to be a little bit down, a little bit dejected after losing and dropping into the elimination bracket. So quadrant have to be careful. We need to see them play at their very best. Otherwise, this could be very one-sided. Granted, that being said, if quadrant do suddenly wake up, this could also be one-sided the other way because we've seen what Quadrant can do when they're at their best. But I worry that maybe their heads aren't screwed on this week. It's a good point you make. Shady might be getting the attentions in the headlines this week because he is the player that is going to replace Respectful and perhaps bring them to better things. But the other the core three, these boys have been around the block and they've competed for, for years and years. 2016, back at Wembley, Flux was making those top fours along with Moe's. So it's great to see these players back in, in amongst it. And they have the ability and the talent to really challenge these bigger teams, but they need to do it in stages like this. And this is the time to be perform that upset against Quadrant. And I think the skill gap in the moment in Europe is so close between a lot of these players that to try and better another team, sometimes it is that passion. Sometimes it is that practice, right? Raw skill can only get you so far. Sure, you might have those pop-off games where it just blows the other team out of the water. And that's what Quadrant can definitely do here. But Online Warriors, I think that they will be thriving with the chance here to try and take down Quadrant in the elimination bracket. King of the Hill then, game one. Through the eyes and ears of the man Shady as he goes top middle, immediately turns his attention towards two, but gets shut down right from the get-go. Two go down, make it three for Online Warriors, and a hot start for Quadrant is a double kill for Chick. That's what Quadrant had to do. They had to wake up. We had to see them show what they're actually made of because it just seemed like they were half asleep in the previous series. I want to see the Quadrant that played at Kansas City. Granted, I know that we've got a different player, Nurex is there instead of Fragger, but all the stats would suggest that was going to be an improvement to this roster. So they need to be showing us again how they played in that KC lineup. Overshield player now compliments that with a sniper rifle. What can he do with it though? As he gets now onto standbags, turns and whips over towards Snakey. Will land the body shot, but a great job out of Snakey to shut down that overshield player before he can do any significant damage. All the slays have gone back and forth here, Dan. Nobody really taking control. Yeah, hill's difficult because this first hill, you want to prioritize getting the overshield instead of the hill. So there's a little bit of a scrap at Ovi side. When, when finally that overshield is picked up, you get a kind of match up in the middle of the map and no one really able to pick up any serious time. But finally, someone does find themselves in that hill. It is going to be online warriors. They get the first a little bit of time, but they are being collapsed on right now by Quadrant. A great push from both Big Door and over from Nest. Shady, last man alive inside the hill, uses that repulsor play just to buy himself a little bit more time. And Chick will use that to back down and re-engage and hoping SLG will be on hand to do the job. It's going to be Shad who takes down that hill player in the end, but they've managed to get just about a quarter of the time that they need to secure hill number one. Sniper rifle back in the hands of SLG and how he would love to start peeling some wigs here and now. But nobody looking to step inside that hill just yet. Both these teams recognizing they need to get a couple of kills in their favor, which has now gone that way. And Two for two is the split. SLG with Sniper Rifle. Eyes trained on the sandbags and now pillars. Has to hit the shot, doesn't he, really? 
Or our online warrior is going to be patient. It's very intelligent if they do. They, they kind of wait for the spawns. You don't want to be challenging on your own, but perhaps they weren't aware of that sniper rifle. Now the second wave has to take down SLG without fail, which they do so. All four dead for Quadrant. And that is a really good push from online warriors. Maybe Mose was the bait over towards Sandbags. It really did work out for him, but he needs to start finding some kills. Six assists, though. I'm sure he'll be more than happy. Nice clean break then for online warriors. And they now set up camp in the B hill. And Will Quadrant now start to flirt with the idea of just giving this one up and setting up elsewhere. Shad, though, gets touched tight, gets pushed off the map, though. And that's going to be him straight into the split splash and having the drink. But Nurix in the hill, battling, hustling and tussling. He will ultimately fall as well. Two dead for Quadrant momentarily, but they're still looking to scrap to this hill. Both teams very evenly matched. This is definitely a scrap. Everyone's throwing fisty cuffs at the moment, hoping that they can land the last punch. Snakey does land the last punch and finally is rewarded with a little bit of hill time. But now you just need to be working out spawns. Hill is so important, probably more important than any other game type that we have in Halo, of keeping control of not just your team's spawns, but keeping tabs on where the other team is spawning. SLG turns, head in a swivel. Takes down that player, no shields, top middle in Moe's. Now all of a sudden, Quadrant have control. Two dead here. Shady desperately trying to contest the hill, milking for as long as he could, but waiting for his team to spawn back up. And Snakey going to be the first man that can get there. Moe's battle for pipe, or down to pillars, excuse me. And Shad's going to come out on top this time. And this could mean if online warriors don't step inside the hill, Quadrant take the first one. Quadrant will take the first point, but boy, was it close. Online Warriors will be frustrated with that one, but it was SLG just popping up with that double, having that sniper control once more that allows Quadrant to really take the, finally take a grasp of this game because it was very back and forth. It was a very scrappy game in the kind of B area, the green area of the map. But now we've got hills which do require a little bit more control. They are harder to push, harder to break down. So we'll see how both of these teams approach this. Quadrant have that foothold in the game, that early lead. SLG with the overshield. It's going to be the second one for Quadrant now. Using it expertly here to secure one kill. Shady down on the pillars, tries to pop the shield, somehow gets that kill, but is traded out. Four dead now for Online Warriors, and this hill will be uncontested for the next 15 seconds or so. It's about time that Chick woke up. I thought he had a disappointing series last uh, time out as well. And I do consider him and SLG two of the best players in Europe alongside several others in this region. And I think that they would have been looking at that saying, why aren't we able to beat Na'Vi? Why aren't we able to get to those winners finals so we can take on our biggest rivals Ascend? But they need to match up now with Online Warriors and prove that they are the better side, that they do deserve to be the, to those latter stages. Because if they even fault even slightly here in this series, I think a lot of questions will be asked. Snake bite recently tweeted out, beware of flying snakes. And what can Snakey do here is he jumps up and puts some shots into that player down on the dummy door. Scampers away, but shots in the back won't get the job done for Snakey this time. And the hill will continue to score though, so he's done his job in clearing out the riffraff and sending them back from whence they came. Position top tower now. Shots will ring out across live fire. Melee goes through, ultimately shady last man standing. It's going to mean more time for Quadrants as they close the gap. You can grenade that hill successfully from A, just to give you that little bit of an advantage. Flux gets the break here to get the entry to try and push. But with SLG and a sniper rifle, a lot of responsibility. Oh. And he manages to hit the shot. It's a, a blainer as he goes down. And that will give Quadrant the chance. And it does. All four dead for online warriors. And it's shots like that, even with your last dying breath, that make a difference in these kind of close games. A shot that could pierce the hopes and aspirations of online warriors or fade away. That means 2-0 now and immediately Quadrant gain control of that third hill and the overshield. But Chick is isolated all alone. It's going to be a 1v2 right here, right now. Mo is the first victim though. Repulsor play come in. Will he up to use it? No, he won't. And he will fall because of it. Two dead. Chick with the overshield. But that was all he needed. Doesn't quite get the connection with the sniper. But this is good from Quadrant. They have control in most of the hills. They're doing very well at keeping online warriors an arm's length away when they try and push at the same time. If Moe's wakes up, though, a little bit, if Moe starts hitting his shots in the way that we know he can, I know, granted, he does have 10 assists right now, but he has been struggling in some of those 1v1s. And I think if he starts to win, win those battles, if he starts to win those really important scenarios that are happening in some areas of the map, then online warriors might be able to transition that into a little bit of hill time. Just waiting on 
The Malta man to catch fire here. 7 and 15 currently. SLG tries to escape with the sniper rifle. Snakey ensures that will not be a possibility this time, but they have got a foothold in the garage. They have started to score, but they've seen this before. Can Urix get the break that his team require? Looks back base, and that's going to be nothing but death awaiting him as the sniper shot melee combination is successful as it so often is. SLG picks up two in the feed, though, to answer back. It's a 2v2 on the map, but Shad's got intentions on the hill. And it's just not quite enough of a setup from Online Warriors to get them that point. They're going to need one more break here. Shady's going to be the initial pusher, but oh. that's what you can't afford to do against any team, let alone Quadrant, is be pushing solo and not win that 1v1 engagement. Shad versus Shady. And it's the SHAD that wins this time. It's been a criticism of Shady for some time. He can often be the first player into a fight. And if he doesn't win that highly risky 1v1, he leaves his team very isolated, very exposed. And that's what we're seeing here in the garage window. Three dead apiece here, oh. though. Chicken Shad in the respawn screen. And SLG will join them over shield for Nurex, though. It's been the overshield story here for Quadrant as they've really dictated the pace of play and control the sandbox. And you can see the difference between the two teams in terms of practice level. Quadrant are far better at setting up and breaking and getting those overshields, as you mentioned. Online Warriors do have that kind of core wits about them. They are winning a, a lot of fights, a lot of team fights. They're having some fantastic moments, but they just can't quite get over the edge at the moment. And it's it's a worrying sign, I think, for a lot of teams in Europe when Online Warriors are playing this well, considering how long they have been a team. And they certainly will have that potential to disrupt some of these top teams. But I think this is what Quadrant had to demonstrate. They couldn't allow Online Warriors to come out too fast and, and show them that they were just going to be flailing this week. Instead, Quadrant have showed up when they needed to. The rare fragments there for online warriors so far in game one they've shown little bits of success they're a jigsaw piece but they're just missing a couple of pieces here and maybe the practice they need heading into valencia right here right now is running the gauntlet in the lower bracket and quadrants so far have really controlled this game and although like we say online warriors looking good in patches unable to put anything together in terms of controlling the hill and again, they just don't quite get there in the hill to secure the point, and they're going to have to break. And granted, I've said granted a lot today, but this is going to be a hill that is very easily breakable if you play it right. You're so vulnerable to grenades when you are holding the hill over towards Overshield, but this is a long hold from Quadrant. They got aggressive, and if SLG hits shots with his sniper rifles, we could be looking at a 4-0. You think you have more time than you do sometimes. 35 seconds total is all that's required to secure a hill. They have got that break. And could they be about to secure their first hill? It looks as though it's likely. Yes, indeed. Three and one now the score. But the clock in the game, one, sitting at one minute 53, is going to start to play a factor very soon here, Dan. It could do if these hills start to get scrappy, that's for sure. But not only did Online Warriors get that final bit of hill, they did secure an overshield. When we look at the stats and we look at how the slaves have been going, I mean, Snakey's been having a great game. Shady's been performing well. Sure, Mos and Flux aren't positive at the moment, but the assists across the board have been pretty successful for Online Warriors. They're not exactly getting outslayed too heavily by this Quadrant roster. And Quadrant find themselves on the back foot with this hill, and this is the scrappy hill that we know and sometimes love, but most of the time hate here on Live Fire because it's so difficult to stay alive. A straight up brawl on Royal Rumble for top middle. Oftentimes, the late entry can be the successful one. Fight down though on Sandbags, top middle online warriors fighting tooth and nail for every inch of it. And they've been successful so far, securing well over 75% of what they need now to secure hill number two and start to ask questions of Quadrant. We've seen this in Strongholds game types. We now could be seeing it in King of the Hill. Quadrant sometimes just are not able to shut out the game. What was important for online warriors for that period of play is they had tower control. They were getting spawns. They were able to really be a nuisance to any quadrant member that tried to get into the hill and now shady alongside snakey who finds himself on top tower once more should be able to get these final moments and they do it's 3-2 this game is not over yet and it's been all about the spawn control for online warriors the positioning to make sure that they have good spawns over and over but they need to find that same kind of pace that same kind of strategy here for this b hill 118 on the clock then quadrant have to break this setup shady back tower Back green, excuse me, milking for as long as he can, waiting for his teammates to get closer to him. But he has lost one in the process in the shape of Flux, and Snakey has also fallen in the meantime. So Shady desperately doing such a successful job, doing so well 
Flux last man standing for online warriors and quadrant take control again. They had have already secured this hill. They have seen success here already. When it was oh, the wow. first hill of the game, but Yurix winning that fight over towards pillars and now the quadrant help is here. Cavalry has arrived. Now they're looking to set up and expand. Yeah, that was a little bit of a desperate push there from Snakey. Didn't wait for his team. Instead, he tried to take a 1v1, which he lost. And now you can see the detriment it has on the rest of the team as they had to face a four versus three. Two big kills, though. Do come out from Quadrant once more to make sure they can continue to secure time here. They will try and play for this hill. They're not going to play time just yet and try and hope to just win 3-2. But we'll see if online we always pick up some more big kills then maybe quadrant might change their mind but right now they have done enough they've secured enough to still be scoring points it can be so frustrating you've seen online warriors getting so many players down to no shields but just not enough haven't got the angles to get those kills moe's desperately tries to get close to the hill but chick sitting pillar is the easiest kill he's likely to clean up today shady cut off guard here by chick once more and that's another one he's going to send to the respawn screen fade him to black also so the ingredients are here for Quadrant to take the game if they so choose to. Yeah, they just have to be sitting in this hill. Chick realizes that. He was in a great position over towards Pillars, but now you need to be scoring these points. Moe's has to get in the hill. Unable to do so, though, and that will mean Quadrant take game 1-4-2 and King of the Hill on live fire. Online Warriors huffed and puffed, but Quadrant's house stands strong. Great game though, uh, like I love seeing how competitive this game is. Uh, quite often when we jump into the elimination bracket and you see one of these top teams drop down, it can be a little bit of a walk in the park for one of the sides, but I think Online Warriors definitely put up a good fight. There will be no clapping of cheeks happening. I was completely wrong on that part, part and I'm glad because I was worried about Quadrant. I think that probably Quadrant were worried about Quadrant as well. Some of the players kind of side-eyeing each other saying, hey, what's going on here? Why are we losing to Navi in this manner? But it does seem like they have finally arisen from their slumber. Far better performance. King of the Hill looked comfortable for them. A little bit shaky in the in the kind of middle stages, but I think that was more down to some of the individual kills that we were seeing from the likes of Snakey to really try and uh, pressure this quadrant roster. Shaky in the middle stages, but Snakey in the latter stages as he was performing very, very well. 8,000 damage and all applauded before the series were going to Shady, but showing once more Snakey can gun with the best of them. Most damage output in the entire lobby, so what a performance out of him, but unable to get his team over the finish line and Quadrant take game one, Dan. And is there anything in the stats for Carnage report that will in indicate that Online Warriors have a chance heading into this next layer? I think assists-wise and, and the team shot was pretty good for Online Warriors and their individual fight went fairly well for them. There were times where they lost quite pivotal 1v1s and that's both uh, Shady and Snakey, that's a lot of S's, were guilty for it. Moe's also struggled in some of his 1v1s, which unfortunately left the team in a three versus four. And for a while, Moe's was actually scraping to try and pick up kills. And I'm not highlighting him because I think he played particularly badly because he was still doing the damage. You can see the amount of assists he was able to put out. But those 1v1s can make such a huge difference in King of the Hill where it's absolutely important that you get the spawns for your team and keep control and keep tabs on the opposition when they're spawning. Otherwise, you will find yourself in a constant cycle of just desperating trying to get to the hill or giving up on that hill as the other team will have every idea of which avenue you're going to be pushing them. Let's talk about what Quadrant did right in game one. Those overshields time and time again, Dan, they were picking them up, they were securing them and they were playing a massive factor in game one as we now look towards their catalyst. Yeah, and if that is going to be a factor in game one, then is it going to be a factor here in game number two when it comes to power up control? Are we going to see them do the same thing with the overshield here on catalyst? Because if they can keep securing it, then they do bloody well to do so. It's not an easy power-up to grab on Catalyst. We know that you leave yourself so exposed to every single angle that seems possible on the map, except literally the flag, and you are going to be looked at. So you need to be having control. You need to be taking down the rest of the team before you can even think about going for that overshield. Or sometimes you can require a little bit of a distraction technique, maybe send three players just to try and make a little bit of a ruckus, make some noise, and then you grab that OV. But you have to get to your team very quickly Otherwise, you'll see all three of them fall before you even arrive. Online Warriors have got to win this next game or they will be eliminated and they will go out on a whimper here in game two. Slayer Catalyst is the stage and it is set. Snakey situation situated over towards that plasma rifle. That's top middle now. Shots will be exchanged over shield secured. And although isolated bottom middle, they've done a great job of securing over shield number one. Yeah, they got those opening kills, did Online Warriors, and they knew they were going to have the first chance to nab this OV. And Snakey now can have the freedom to just walk on in a base, 
but he just needs to be communicating to the rest of the team as to where he's going so he gets the support he does get the support elsewhere because they picked up kills and this is a really good start for online warriors six to one sword in your control potentially skewer as well if you want to go for it you've got to be careful with your quadrant here you don't want to be running into this sword so you need to keep tabs on where snakey is and the medic on slayer catalyst is still very much in its infancy and Something we're seeing teams have very much success in doing is slaying out one base, going port to port and going back and forth. SLG with the skewer turns SLG into a kebab. Shady gets two. Shad will also join him. So that's two kills now in favor of Online Warriors. A six kill differential now between these two teams and Quadrant cannot keep giving away easy death. Shady has to be careful as well. He knows there's a player underneath him. And if he misses this shot, he's going to be pushed. Gets the trade, though. Very important that you get that trade when you are isolated in a fight like that. And I think you're right. I mean, the meta in Catalyst Slayer, I don't even know if it exists yet. I don't think anyone's worked out how to play uh, this map and this mode combined with one another. It can slow down at times. It can be super fast paced at other times. And certainly in matchmaking, it's absolute carnage at the moment. And everyone's running around like headless chickens. But... When you start to look at competitive matches, people are trying different things. They are trying to hold certain bases, but for the most part, push as a team. Take advantage when you have an extra player, for example. If you've managed to get one down, try and collapse. Try and get those kills. You can see Moes has his intentions and his eyes stat in the overshield, waiting for the slays to go his team's way. They have done now as he makes that push, but there's three members of Quadrant facing him, baiting and switching back and forth. He's trying to isolate one of them, but you can see that overshield that he once held has been completely evaporated. Manages to secure one, which is better than nothing. SLG, last man standing, trying to scramble away. He's going to go straight into Flux. He manages to get that kill and trade it out, but the damage has already been done. 22 kills to nine now. Yeah, 13 kill lead should never really be achievable to come back in. But on this map and mode, I, I never know what's going to happen. So I think that Quadrant just need to calm down a little bit. Make sure they're winning those engagements. Make sure they're pushing together and not allowing online warriors to have too many two versus ones or any sort of player advantages and they might be able to get back in this game they haven't been able to secure any of those overshields of course that's probably why we're seeing online warriors commanding such a lead if quadrant can change that if they can get an ov if they can maybe get hold of the sword then it's still within their grasp at the moment but it can very quickly go out of control if they're not careful 10 kills then this is what's required 24 to 14 this engagement now between chick and flux will amount to nothing just just for the moment but Ultimately, and eventually, SLG will get the job done. It's going to be a trade. Chick for Shady, one for one. 25 to 16, a nine kill differential now. And Snakey wins that 1v1. And as long as they can keep winning those engagements, they will win map number two. It seems a, a long way away, doesn't it? 24 kills. But when your opponent's on 16, I think you can be a little bit more free with how you want to play. And a map like this... Freedom sometimes does help out. You can just walk around confident. You can find players maybe hiding around corners. And if you're able to pick up a skewer, that could be the real difference maker. But on this certain scenario, it's going to be Quadrant who have the chance to maybe hit some shots with it. It's a ridiculous weapon to have on the map because it is so powerful. When you do hit those shots, the no scopes are far more comfortable than the sniper rifle, that's for sure. And if you put it in the right hands, and especially a player like Chick, he's going to be hitting those shots consistently. With the lead, Dan, now sitting at nine kills, is Online Warrior's biggest enemy right now about to be complacency? It absolutely could be complacency. It also could be Chick with a power weapon. If, yeah. they, if he can get those kills to now give a little bit of control to Quadrant and they get the next overshield, then Online Warriors will then find Quadrant in that same rut that they were in a little bit earlier where you're consistently being collapsed on, but you don't seem to have a way to get out because you're either walking into a sword or walking into an overshield or walking into a skewer. It just seems like there are all the tools available for the opposition team, but they have closed this gap considerably, considering it was once 13 kills, so definitely within a chance of getting back into this game. It was once 13, is now sitting at 7. Those kills are going to help the cause no end. 6 now, and you can see exactly why they're cutting away at that. Chick has picked up a killing spree for both him personally and his team, trying to claw them right back into things, and one more killing spree will put them right there or thereabouts this is 35 to 30 now as we head into the latter stages of this game this next round of stages is going to be so pivotal and it's gone the first one's gone to shady the horrible thing about having a lead like this and then it's starting to slip away is then you change your 
mindset as a player where you start to say, hey, well, maybe we should be slowing down. Maybe we need to be changing things. Let's not throw this one away. That seed of doubt gets planted into your mind and you begin to panic. You probably lose 1v1s because of it, because you know how important they are. But online warriors need to be playing with that same sort of aggression and pace that they were in the early stages. And right now they need to avoid Chick because Chick is doing everything for Quadra. Seven kills remain the, dis the difference here is overshield. Ready to pop now. And Chick sitting over towards this side of the map now. Can he be the one to get secure for his team? He tries to re repel and grapple towards Moe's, but the repulsor has done the damage and pushed him right the way back. <laughs> Fires, R repel, shots exchange, grapple, back and forth. Yeah, all, all, all the ones, all the, all the words. Everything then. was floating through your mind right then, and the same thing's going through my brain. I was like, wait, what uh, was it uh, he used? Yeah. Oh, it was, it was the repulsor. Yeah, that's the one that eventually came out. And it's very important that most did so as well. You've got to have that in your back pocket. You've got to be prepared to use it because the sword is such a big influence on this map in those close quarters engagements. Five kills between these two teams now, though. If online warriors let this slip, if Quadrant are able to put, you know, just one all four dead together, Together, suddenly this game is tied and that never should have happened really with a 13 kill difference earlier I remember a certain Steven Gerrard once upon a time saying let's not let this slip and we know how that one went snaky back base though a couple of shots to contend with SLG will re-challenge now with the help of a teammate but snaky baiting expertly back there buying time for his team to move elsewhere and to strategize across the map and you can see them starting to rotate chicks gonna be the first point of contact for the team on the top side. SLG still has that skewer to play with, with three. If he shall be able to pick off a couple of players here. He's gonna be looking for Moby Dick. Nurex though has picked up two in the feed. Three kill game now all of a sudden, two dead. And it's gonna be Snakey in a 1v1, but he's lost this one. Shady's insured, it's traded out. Three kills, make it two now as Shady puts in a triple kill. How massive that could be. Still a full kill difference, but as you say, the triple kill makes it 48 for online warriors. They only need two more. They can play this one carefully, and that's a big nade as well. Not only does it do damage, but it also keeps Quadrant from being able to push up and collapse. His sword is coming up in five seconds, but Flux has the skewer. Can make a real difference here in these final moments. Can Flux punch a hole in the Quadrant Hearts? Game two. Four kills remain the difference. Grenades getting exchanged back and forth. First kill has gone to Chick though as he's locked one in onto Moe's and now all of a sudden nerves start to creep in. Flux desperately looking for information. Nurex, couple of shots and that will ask him questions. It's 49 to 46 and Shady has locked in that final kill. 17 he got in that game down. Impressive stuff but we're all tied up in this series. And Flux probably wiping the swell of his Brow, the swell off his brow, the brow. sweat the swell, off his brow. The swell, bro. If you combine those the bread two, off his swell. it's, it's yeah. just swell right there. That's what it is with the sweat <laughs> on the brow. Because there was a lot of responsibility having that skewer if the rest of the team start to fail. But thankfully, Shady, he carried on doing what he did all game. And that was be aggressive in the right moments and hit his shots. That's why Shady has been such a terrifying player to play against if you are in the European region, because he has that capability to enter engagement and win effectively time and time again. 17 kills for Shady. It wasn't comfortable in the end, considering they were f uh, so far ahead. But Quadrant, if they look at that and say, okay, well, you know, as we're going into Valencia, as we're learning as a team, everything that we did in those last five minutes were great. First five minutes, absolutely horrendous. Let's never do it again. And the other side of the thing is you might say for online warriors, Dan, is that we played so, so well, and let's not do that again, where we almost throw away a 13 kill lead. It can happen, though, in a case where you feel like you can do anything and still not lose when you have a lead like that. You you become complacent, as you mentioned. Like, it could have been their biggest victim. There was complacency. And even though we didn't get to see every player's POV, I'm sure there would have been times that they probably push things they wouldn't usually have. If the game was tied 29-29, they probably don't push one of the halls to take a fight. But because they were up by 13, they were like, yeah, you know what, I can push this. I can take this 1v1. And then slowly but surely, Quadrant took advantage of that, got hold of the power weapons, and the skewer made a big difference for Chick. But it was the early overshields that really gave Online Warriors this lead, and they, they used that momentum to consistently be pushing the bases. They were pushing as a unit at times, but it has to be shady in the damage he was dealing alongside Snakey, which just propelled Online Warriors to their success. 
I mean, spoke about how well Quadrant did in controlling the slam box and particularly getting control of those overshields in game one. Game two was a totally different story. It was online warriors who started to pick up the pace then. It's down to probably just because, you know, Quadrant bread and butter over on Live Fire. They've played it a hundred times getting that overshield. They know how to set up for it, regardless of what game time it is. Whereas for Catalyst, I don't think anyone's really realized how to set up for an overshield. You kind of just play it in the moment. You get kills and then you hope you can grab it before the spawns happen. It's not a case of you setting up for it necessarily. Sure, some players will try and sit in areas where they can watch over it, but then still grabbing it afterwards is some kind, sometimes very difficult. Anyway, as we move into map number three, it will be our third and final map of this series. 1-1 one, one between these two teams and so what, either, either team that progresses here, I think it's going to be a real threat in this elimination bracket. And it's going to be Strongholds on Street is our game number three. Something that Online Warriors were very successful in when playing with Respectful. And Shady might change things and alter it just a little bit, but you want to see the same sort of stuff that they've seen. They were able to perform against the likes of Navi and indeed in Ascend when they were able to topple them. But it's going to be Quadrant. In a game three, they find themselves back against the wall now. All of a sudden, questions being asked, answers to be found out at the end of this game. But online warriors, Dan, there's no pressure. This is almost house money. It is, and I think that it was always going to be a case that one of these teams or some teams ended up with lower placements than they should have just because of the seeding with online warriors making that change. They come into an eighth seed when they probably should have been somewhere around fourth, fifth, realistically. A nice off the rack in the early stages, SLG getting the rockets here. But this game is for top four. There's still other teams in the elimination bracket. Blackhand just took down BDRZ 2-0. So Blackhand find themselves in top four. I think they'll be delighted with that. They're going to have to play against the winner of this, of course, for the chance of getting top three. Second successful, successive top four finish for Blackhand now, it must be said. So those boys are putting together some impressive results. Now, ahead of an exciting time, in sunny Spain, Valencia will be the stage. Can they match those ambitions yet again? But as we turn back over here, Stronghold Street, A and C in control of Quadrant, but Mo is looking to turn B in his team's favor. The early scoring has gone the way of the French team, but not for long. Are they able to take Shady out of C here? They are. So now this is difficult for online warriors. You have to pick and choose as to where you want to go. It's great help from Mo's, but has to stay alive. We'll do so with a double. And now they can capture C and B. Now they can start to score. But you'd imagine Quadrant should be more comfortable on this map than Online Warriors. Sheerly out of more playtime as a squad than Online Warriors have been able to have when it comes to scrims. But at the same time, when you look at the pivotal 1v1s that were being won by Online Warriors in that last game, if they can have that same success, then they can really put themselves in good stead here on streets. B and C for Quadrant. A for Online Warriors after a very small window of a triple cap, but not enough points amounted for Quadrant and Shady's going to get the first pick here. How insignificant will that be? Chick answers back onto Moe's. So, honors evening here, 3v3 on the map as Flux gets another one for his team. Three dead momentarily for Quadrant. That should mean some more control and a time to set up for Online Warriors. He's going to be bulldogging control of Online Warriors as well. Very important that you manage to prioritize that. Flux knew exactly where that weak player was and it's always dangerous pushing a bulldog player, even if they are weak because they can hit you with that. Wombo combo of a shot at a beatdown and you find yourself falling flat on your face as the second rocket's again picked up by Quadrant and they will be able to fire both of them. Moa's last man standing for dead now for Online Warriors after the boomstick takes care of the multi-man. So now we could see a triple cap very shortly with Flux looking to turn his attentions over towards A and perhaps get a reset for his team. But A now slowly getting converted for Quadrant. They weren't as quick as they maybe should have been. Quadrant are doing well to keep Online Warriors on a spawn cycle at the moment as well. They're kind of killing one or two. They pause a little bit. They see where the other two players are. Then they'll slay them maybe five seconds after. And it means that Online Warriors have struggled to get together as a four. Finally, they find themselves together and they actually get some success out of it. They take down three players from Quadrant and they can start scoring. Quadrant went three dead. Online Warriors went four dead. Now again, Quadrant do it again. They go down by three and that's where we're going to see B and C in control of the online warriors once more and then it now starting to eat away that very slender lead quadrant were able to push the opening stages of the game SLG backs down into PD two kills go in quadrant's favor make it three flux over towards A has a lot of work to do as he makes his, his way over towards cafe for a cup of coffee he did get one with the Bulldog, which was important. They didn't find himself 
kind of scrapping with two players. But Flux needs to position himself where he can actually start to contest some hills here with the Bulldog, and that's exactly what we're going to see from him right now. Even though Quadrant have done very well rotating between all three of these strongholds, Online Warriors now find themselves with a temporary triple cap. They have got back into this game. Quadrant just need to make sure that they don't allow Online Warriors to have as much freedom as they've been having off spawn. I think Quadrant have not been aggressive enough at times. You spoke about planting seeds of doubt. And our, our online warrior is starting to apply water to that now. And Quadrant are in big trouble. Chicks picked up two, and that will help the cause. Flux is in trouble. Back tower, but is able to escape with his life. Looks to reach out, but it was only for a moment and to his own detriment as he eventually follows the same faith of his two teammates prior. So B and C, though, have remained in control for online warriors all this time. They've taken the lead now with a 30 point difference. Yeah, even though, you know, Flux went down eventually, he milked for quite a long period of time where it kept the attention of Quadrant over towards A. Finally, they do push up and get B here, but they've lost two players. This is an important kill, though, and Shad maybe has a ch chance to get a triple. He does get a triple, locks it in. Snakey could be the over. But unfortunately, two nades will tag him and take him down to no shield, so... Ops not to challenge this time, and that was the right decision this time around. Moe's down to no shields, backs off, and two of his teammates come out to replace him. It's a straight swap then. It's going to be a brawl for B. Such a difficult fight, taking it from driveway. The guys at Pillars have so much cover they can dive in and out of, and of course they can bank nades towards you as well, so you need to push as a unit. And even the Online Warriors tried it, they didn't find too much success, but this is better. They're actually pushing through bottom middle together, making sure they're actually taking avenues which give them a little bit more help when it comes to grenading and when it comes to actually taking height advantages. Online Warriors retake the lead in the game and retake control of the map. Shad down to no shields. The help of Moe's picking wow. up yet another two and that was exactly what we asked of Moe's in game one and he's showing up big in game three. And this is an important series for Moe's and Online Warriors. I think this, this kind of tournament that's coming up in Valencia, Moe's would love to be able to be back at the top of European Halo. You've got to remember he was there in Halo 5. He was the guy who was on the top teams, but has found himself around top eight, top six. Of course, had that one run in Pro Series where they were able to get to second place, but then the change happened. They need to try and find that same success once more, and Shady is where they've planted their hopes and dreams. And I tell you what, he hasn't disappointed in this series, Jersey. I think the Shady's had a very solid series. He has the Rockets now and looking to apply pressure onto A. With the Stalker Rifle and the Drop Shield combination, he has a lot of tools that can set him up for success here. And Online Warriors can continue to crank the pressure on Quadrants. The 2v2 on the map, SLG desperately trying to stay alive, will be able to convert C. And Slays have gone in Quadrants' favor here momentarily. This next Rocket's going to be so big for, for Shady. He manages to get the blast damage onto one. Snakey will secure it. Two kills for Snakey. But can they now get into a hill? SLG surviving at sea there was massive, by the way. Just jumping in the air so only his little pinky toe could be seen. And unfortunately, Shady just couldn't quite connect with that shot. And it meant that Quadrant were able to not only gain control and score some points, but it just frustrated Online Warriors a bit. Shady put himself in a position bottom middle where he left himself very vulnerable to try and get that kill. Online Warriors are still scoring here, Shirzy. Flux the last remaining player, though. And Chick turns his attention over towards C and will start to convert. Can the rest of his team get the slays around it though that he needs? First one has gone in favor of online warriors and the bulldog has done the job and the damage it needs to do. Drop shield goes down. Shady does not care. Slides, challenges, jumps and soars and fours. So he's turned one. Looking to control B once more. A and B now secured for online warriors and they're really starting to ask questions of Quadrant. I will say that Bulldog has been in Flux hand quite a lot this game and he's won some really important individual battles when he's the last player alive. Otherwise, he would have been caught in that like pretty detrimental spawning system where he's away from the rest of his team. But SLG now has a lot to do here over at B. A lot to do. A thruster pack will help him, but not enough as his old teammate Shady sends him to the respawn screen with the help of a melee and picks up another one does Shady. That thruster pack coming in clutch after picking it up. Off of SLG, A and B still remain in control, locked in for Online Warriors and the Rockets now to complement them and their attentions now on C. Quadrant are in massive trouble.
Massive trouble. Two players went for rockets. It didn't really matter who picked them up, but Snakey was the one who won the ping battle, it would seem, against Shady. And now, what can you do with the rockets? In the moment, I think he's just been able to zone Quadrant. They ran away from the rockets, and he got the freest of his life. And now he should secure a kill, which he will manage to do so. 200 to 124. Online Warrior is very close to oh. closing this one out. It's a triple, and you better believe he's going to challenge for the over. Nest LG recognizing the situation he was in, almost ready to get clipped up, but Online Warriors isolating Quadrant time and time again, picking them off. It doesn't matter where they set up. It's the pressure from Online Warriors. It's been relentless. It was first place just a few weeks ago for Quadrant. Then they dropped to top three. They could be dropping to top six if they're not careful. Ten more points required for Online Warriors. Quadrant need to play perfectly at this point. You've got to be winning these fights, oh. but Snakey playing incredible. Snakey locks in what could be the death knell in the coffin of Quadrant here. Is there anybody to step inside the hill? No, there isn't. Online Warriors take the series and put Quadrant in possibly their worst ever finish in top six. What a performance out of them. I was worried after these Navi series, but I think that you have to take your hats off to how Online Warriors were able to recover from that game one because it seemed like Quadrant were back. It seemed like they've woken up, but Online Warriors, the individual ability some of these players offer, and when it all starts to click together, when the cogs are moving in the correct way, they really can compete with the very best. And I think that's what they've shown here against Quadrant. Because even though Quadrant finished top six, because of how the seedings worked, it likely, it, it looks worse than it should have been. They probably could have still realistically got to top four if seeding had gone a little bit differently. But top six is where they finish. And that's all they can manage to achieve prior to Valencia. That's going to be their last kind of outing in Pro Series. And it is going to be a very deflating one. As for Online Warriors, the story still goes on. We had the revenge tour of Respectful, but maybe it's Shady's turn to start turning a few heads. Daniel, 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 I'll tell you something. I'm so excited for Valencia. What was only a few weeks ago, a nailed on probably a send win. A couple of drops for a couple of teams. All of a sudden, top four was guaranteed for Jay Ling's, it seemed. And now we've got Black Hand. They're, they're looking to throw a spanner in the works. We've got Online Warriors looking to upset the Apple card as well. All of a sudden, this top six conversation is spiced up. I mean, Jay Ling's top eight, Quadrant top six, not expecting that. What's and happening? Granted, yes, okay, seeding was different, but that's the results that we find them ourselves in. Blackhand still managing to push themselves into top four. They took advantage of what they could on their side of the bracket, and they'll be more than happy to get those extra seeding points going into uh, Valencia for sure. And you're completely right. I mean, the changes really shook everything up here in Europe, but I do think they were for the better. I do think that Europe as a whole is getting stronger because of those changes, because everyone's starting to pushing each other. It's not just going to be a case of Ascend slapping everyone week in, week out, and everyone just kind of rolling over, showing their belly and say, OK, yeah, Ascend, you're the best. No, people are saying, Ascend, we want to take that crown from you. We want to be the number one team. Quadrant had it. And now suddenly they find themselves out of the tournament at top six. And Online Warriors, they're going to be the team that will want to try and put that crown on for once. But they've got a, a long elimination bracket ahead of them.